All right, today we're looking at solving systems of equation by elimination. So the first thing I should talk about is uh, what does it mean to solve a system of equations? Well, when you solve a single equation for a single variable like x, uh, you're finding the value of x or the values of x, if we're talking uh, quadratics or absolute value, uh, that make the equation true. Um, when you get to x's and y's, like you see right below you here, um, we come up with a different problem. Uh, if we have a single equation there, there's uh, most of the time an infinite number of solutions. Okay, uh, and if not infinite, very, very, very many solutions. Uh, so that's, that's not great. Uh, so our solution is to just graph or make a table of solutions, things like that. But if we have two of them, uh, what we're trying to do when we solve a system of equations is find the value of x and y that makes both equations true. They're infinite that make the first equation true, infinite that make the second equation true, and most of the time, uh, just one that will make both of them true. So here's what you're going to do to solve a substitution. You're going to solve one equation for x and y. This is just like literal equations. So you're going to solve for x, but there's going to be a y in your answer. You're going to solve for y, but there's going to be an x in your answer. Then what you're going to do is you're going to substitute that expression into the other equation. Then you should have a single equation with a single variable. You'll solve for that, and then you'll plug in the solution and solve again. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, first things first, what I want you to do is tell me you're allowed to solve for any of these. Okay, so you could solve for x in the first one, y in the first one, x in the second one, y in the second one. Which of these variables do you want to solve for first? Meaning, you're trying to get that variable by itself on one side. Which, which one of those seems the easiest to do? Hopefully what you said is this one, because it's just an x. So it's really easy to get that one by itself. I'm going to subtract 2y from both sides, and I get x equals 6 minus 2y. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to substitute that in to the other equation. So I take my second equation, and I rewrite everything except my x, okay? And I'm substituting it out. This is just like the way it works in sports. So I've got this x in here, okay? He's played just fine, all right? And now I'm going to put in something that's about the set, that, you know, plays the same position as he does, about the same skill level, okay? So that's 6 minus 2y. They're equal to each other, okay? So I'm going to take out x. I'm going to put in 6 minus 2y. I have to use parentheses because I'm turning something that was uh, a single term, x, into something that's two terms. So I've got to make sure uh, that I put parentheses around it to make sure that it counts as one thing. Okay? Distribute the 3. I get 18 minus 6y minus 4y equals 28. I'm going to do two things at once. I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides to get 10. And then I'm going to combine negative 6y and negative 4y, that's negative 10y, divide by negative 10, I get y equals negative 1. Okay? Uh, now what you want to do is plug that back in somewhere, anywhere. It could be one of the first two equations. Uh, actually, the smart place to plug it is usually in here. Okay? So I've got x equals 6 minus 2y. I now know that my y is negative 1. Sorry, those are really bad parentheses. So times negative 1 there. Uh, that gets me 6 plus 2, which is 8. Uh, if you look, if you plug 8 and negative 1 into the first equation, you get 6 equals 6. If you plug 8 and negative 1 into the second equation, you get 28 equals negative 28. Pretty cool. Okay, uh, moving on. We've got one, two more of these to go. I want you to try both of these on your own, pause, and then come back. All right, I'm assuming you've done that. Hey, an F, look at this. It's already done for you. We already solved for Y in the first equation. That means we can substitute this into the second equation. So I'm going to write 3X plus, I'm going to substitute out Y, I'm going to put in 2X plus 1. Now, I don't need the parentheses here. Okay, because there's just a plus sign before it. So, I mean, I can pretend there's a 1 there and distribute the 1 if I want to, but I'm just going to end up getting 3x plus 2x plus 1 
equals negative 9. I didn't end up needing the parentheses there because there was no coefficient on the y. Uh, now I've got 5x plus 1 equals negative 9. Uh, solve that for x, subtract 1, I get 5x equals negative 10, which gives me x equals negative 2. Now that I know that x is negative 2, I'm going to go back into my first one and plug that in. y equals 2 times negative 2 plus 1. That gets me y equals negative 3. And again, I can go and check my work, and it all turns out just fine and dandy and works well for both equations. Okay, last one, and then we should be good to go. Uh, so again, I'm going to solve for y in the first one because it's the one that's all by itself. So add 2x to both sides, and I get y equals negative 4 plus 2x. Oops, almost wrote an x there. Negative 4 plus 2x. Uh, substitute into the second one, negative 6x uh, plus 3 times negative 4 plus 2x equals negative 12. Distribute, I get negative 6x uh, minus 12, because I'm doing 3 times negative 4, plus 6x equals negative 12. Uh-oh, uh I get negative 12 equals negative 12. You guys should know what this means from previous chapters. What did it mean in previous chapters? Well, it meant identity. Okay, and identity meant that uh, basically any, there, there were an infinite number of answers that all real numbers could be plugged in for x. It means something a little bit different here. Okay, what, what negative 12 equals 12, I mean, like, I, I'd, I'd still call it an identity, uh, but what it means is, it means these two equations are the same. Okay, so it means that, uh, it doesn't mean anything could work, but it means any solution that works for one of them will also work for the other one. There are an infinite number of solutions, okay? So make sure that when you're trying to teach your classmates about this, that you let them know that identity and no solution are possible with systems of equations too.